Our forte, our expertise lies in caring for, for the animals that can't care for themselves. got such a variety of individuals that plays a huge role in the daily care of the orphans, rhinos, elephants. You definitely can't do the work that we do, the rehabilitation of all these animals on your own. We're on the verge of 180 people. I've been working here just to keep this area clean and healthy and safety for the babies. So we're preventing the animals getting the disease. You, you only have a small cog and a big wheel. And everybody's got a vital role, uh, their own role to perform. And it's a 24-7 job, sometimes 25-7 job. Esma has grown up so well. She's eating the CERN already as well, about a bale a week, um, which is nothing compared to our big rhinos that receive about seven bales a week. <laughs> so that can become a bit costly as well. The rhino aspect is big, you know, especially with the advent of this poaching crisis. But obviously, as time goes by, that horn develops and the, and the, the risk becomes more and more and more. So there he goes, you know, uh, armed guards at night, um, uh, people watching them during the day, uh, electric fences, uh, alarm systems. We just released two rhino survivors and that's the kind of success that makes it worthwhile. Being able to see them grow up and be able to be there once you set them free back into the wild is the best feeling ever. It took us five years to release them back into the wild. It, it just makes you happy to, to know that you, you are part of contributing towards this species. The rhinos are, are pretty labour intensive, but the elephants are just in another league of their own. From a nutritional, from a company, from a medical point of view. Um, their feeding is, uh, intervals is so much more crucial. They need this company all the time. The elephant orphans drink about 16 litres milk on average a day. We do go through milk formula of three and a half cans per day. You do need additional proteins, etc. We've been putting new things in, taking some things out to try and get the milk formula right. Um, we definitely still have a lot to learn. We are very lucky with the Jobulani herd that accepts orphans and I don't think that will ever change. The fact that these elephants, they know they're all from different families, but looking at the fact that they're here now to form on their new head, new family, so there'll be always a room for an extra elephant, doesn't matter where that elephant will be from. So even though uh, Camp Jablani's main focus is the 15 elephants, we also need to uh, keep in mind that we have a herd of about 60 walking around on the reserve as well. And it's great to have a baseline just to compare ours to the completely free roaming herd. And we can see if our elephants, if, they, if they're on par with the wild herd, if there's more stress, less stress, just see behavior wise if there's a difference with ours because they're in contact with human beings. Especially now because we're starting to see more and more um, orphan babies due to poaching. Hopefully one day we can have introduced them to the job owners so they can also get to experience this and have family, have love around their protection. I've been told the other day that there's still too many elephants. Why do you take these orphans? I don't have an answer because it is costly. You put in a lot of yourself, but I will never turn my back on them. I don't think we would have been able to, to grow and expand without people along the road that assisted us and, and helped us, supported us in what we do, believing in us and 
I'd really like, you know, to, to, to say thank you to everyone.